What's going on everybody? It's your boy Jordan. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to run Google ads for your local business. A lot of my subscribers are marketing agency owners. Whether you are a marketing agency owner, if you're looking to start your own marketing agency, or maybe you are a business owner looking to run Google ads for your own business, here in 2022, I'm going to give you the most updated tutorial video in this video. All right, I said video twice. I don't know why, but if you enjoy this type of content or enjoy this video, and you think it's so helpful, please drop a thumbs up. It would really help push this video for the YouTube algorithms. And if you haven't already, you want to learn more tips, tricks, and how to grow your business, make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is actually you want to have a Google MCC account, all right? And what does that mean? It's just a manager account so that you can manage multiple ad accounts under your manager account, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So it's, you know, it's good for if you're a marketing agency and things like that, but it doesn't really matter. Even if you're a business owner, it would still work, okay? And it's just a lot more, uh, you get a lot more tools, not even tools, but just options, okay? So later on, if you want to manage more ad accounts, you can do so. All right, so it's going to be the very first link, right? So I just Googled MCC account. It's going to be the very first one here. Um, from here, just go ahead and create a manager's account. Log in, sign in, all that good stuff, okay? I already have my own uh, Google MCC ad account sample. So I'm just going to go ahead and log into that one. Okay. But just create your manager's account and I'll see you on the inside. All right. So I'm going to be logging in here. This is a dummy account, by the way. All right. So here is what your, uh, the inside of your Google MCC ad account is going to look like. All right. Now we want to start running campaigns. We want to start running ads. And we want to make sure that everything is set up correctly so that once we start running something, we're going to start seeing a return on investment. Okay. There's lots of businesses out there that run Google ads themselves. And I talk to so many of them and they're just they're like, Jordan, I'm not getting results. Right. And it's because you don't have it set up the right way. All right. So don't worry about it. You're going to learn how to do all that today. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is to create an ad account, right? So remember, this is your manager's ad account, right? So this is not where you run ads out of. You want to create an ad account so that you can run ad run ads out of, right? So uh, whether you, if you're an agency marketing agency, then you're going to want to create an ad account for your clients. If you're a business owner, then just go ahead and create one for yourself, right? So uh, inside the accounts right here, the very first one, performance, you're going to hit the plus sign. And we're just going to go ahead and create a new account. Okay. So from here, just go ahead and name whatever it is that you want. So let's just say that you are a, uh, I don't know, personal injury lawyer client. Okay. Whatever. You can name it, whatever. It doesn't really matter. And then the time zone, um, select whatever. I'm here in Los Angeles time. Okay. Uh, and then you're going to go blah, blah, blah. Save and continue. You don't really need to worry about that stuff. Billing configuration. All right. So from here, uh, you're going to want to enter the credit card information that uh, is going to be linked to this ad account. Okay. So whatever, whoever's responsible for paying the ads, you're going to want to link to uh, the credit card here. All right. So if you are an agency owner, then you want to get your business owners, uh, your clients credit card on here. And obviously if you're a business owner, just go ahead and put your own uh, credit card. All right. So from here, just go ahead and type it in. Very, very simple stuff, all right? Um, and that's pretty much it. So from there, you're just going to hit submit, and you should have your own ad account, all right? So I already have a dummy ad account, so I'm not going to set up this billing here. I don't have credit card on me, um, but let's go ahead and exit out that, all right? And it doesn't matter. It's still going to pop up, okay? So once you once you create it, uh, even if you cancel out that billing, it's still going to pop up here, right? So... So let's just go back to overview. So this is what your dashboard looks like, right? When you first created or your MCC account, if you go into accounts here, you can see all your ad accounts, multiple ad accounts, if you created more than one. Uh, so let's go with this one right here, the one that we just created, okay? And as you can see, uh, this is the dashboard of Google. All right, now we're going to start building campaigns, go into ad groups, 
writing ad copy, finding keywords, how to, uh, how to know what to bid on these keywords. I'm going to show you guys the whole nine yards, right? Everything from A to Z. So like I said, guys, if you appreciate this tutorial, please drop a thumbs up. I'm dropping lots of value bombs here and you are going to just crush it with your uh, account. All right. So from here, you can go ahead and create a new campaign. Super simple, right? This is the only option that it gives you. All right. So you can also press this drop down menu, by the way, and it'll also pop up all the ad accounts. All right. So we're going to go ahead and create a new campaign. Let's just do something simple, right? So depends, depending on what your goals are, you should go ahead and select that. Uh, in this case, for a lot of, um, you know, what we do, we try to do, we generate leads for businesses. And if that's what you're looking to do, you would just go ahead and select this option right here. Okay. Um, if you're looking to just get website traffic, you would select this one. Um, but whatever you select, Google is going to try and optimize for that goal. All right. So we're going to go ahead and click the leads here. Uh, from here, uh, you know, you, you can leave this alone for now, but uh, depending on what your goals are, okay? So if you want some form submissions, if you're, if you're sending traffic to like a landing page and there's a contact form on there, then you can go ahead and check that. Um, and then if you want phone calls coming from your ads, you would just check that, okay? But either way, I'm going to show you how to uh, set... Thing, set up conversion tracking the right way, all right, towards the end of the video. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that unchecked for now, right? We're going to go ahead and click continue. And the best one so far is going to be search, okay? So the search campaign type. Now, if you want to run like YouTube ads, this, this is what you want to do. Go into video. And performance max is a newer campaign type that Google has recently just launched. Uh, it's still a little iffy as far as results from what I've heard. I haven't personally used it myself, but um, for all of our clients, we use search. All right, we can leave all that alone. We can name the campaign, all right? So depending on what the campaign is about, we want everything to be relevant, all right? So Google is very, very, they're the number one search engine, okay? And the num they are the number one search engine because they show the most relevant uh, ads to the searcher. Okay. So in order for us to get a high quality score and for us to, for Google to think that we are showing people what they want to see, we want to keep everything as relevant and as packed tight as possible. Okay. So if this campaign, for example, is about personal injury, we're going to put personal injury. All right. So this is about this campaign is going to be personal about personal injury. We're going to hit continue. Now from here, uh, bidding, ideally we want to use manual, um, manual CPC, which is manual cost per click. And what that means is basically us controlling how much we want to spend per click uh, when someone clicks on our ad, okay? And as you can tell, I mean, Google, they're going to try to get you to use their automated bidding strategy, which isn't bad, but when you leave it up to the, one of the most profitable uh, companies in the world, they're going to, you know, they're going to want to, they're going to spend, they're, they're going to spend a little bit more um, compared to if you were to be in control, right? So if you allow Google to run your clicks and be in control of how much you're spending, obviously they're going to want you to spend a little bit more, right? So, uh, but ideally here, if you don't, you're not too worried about the automated bid strategies, the best one, uh, to start with is to go with clicks to start. And then you can always set a maximum cost per click per bid uh, or cost per click bid limit, but we don't really know that number yet until we do the keyword research, right? Because if our, let's say we don't want to spend more than a dollar, we might just not get any traffic at all, right? Because these, the, the cost per click is going to be a lot higher than that. And then obviously if we put it like too high, like let's just say it's, $800, right? Then we might be overspending on these clicks. Okay. So we want to do a little bit of keyword research. So we know how much we need to be spending on these clicks. All right. So let's go ahead and click next. Now, what I like to do is I like to uncheck display network and I like to uncheck Google search partners. Now, the reason why I uncheck both these options is because uh, from what I've seen, 
the lead quality isn't as great, right? So in the beginning, we want to be as targeted as possible, especially if you are just running ads, right? You want to have a good start, right? You want to be confident in what you're, what you're doing. So we want good, uh, you know, we want to jump off to a good start, get solid leads. And then once later on, once we're happy, we want to expand things. I would still not really check this. I would go to um, just raising the budget and then once you're like all maxed out there, then that's when I would start looking at checking these things. But from my own experience uh, with these checked, it's just uh, lead quality is a lot lower. Um, the cost per click is also cheaper, but it goes with, you know, not as good leads, right? So I, I, I just go ahead and uncheck those in the beginning, especially if you're trying to generate leads for your business and let's keep it going. All right. So under locations, right? We don't want to target the whole country, obviously, right? If you're, especially if you're a local business owner, um, sorry, I didn't explain that part. We're going to go ahead and enter another location and then we're going to hit advanced search. All right. So from here, if you target a very specific location, then you can just go ahead and type that in here, right? So for example, you want to target Los Angeles, right? It's going to tell you where you're targeting there and you're going to reach about 28.4 million people. Okay. Now that might be a lot, it might be a lot of a big population. So let's say you want to be just a little bit more local, I guess, then we would go to radius. All right. So let's just say you only, you know, you only want to do like 15 miles around Anaheim. Okay. So we'll, we'll put in Anaheim and we'll type in 15. And we'll target. And as you can see, 15 miles, um, that's where we're going to be targeting. Now, when you go and select this, you want to keep in mind how big or small your city is, right? If there's a lot of population, obviously, you don't want to be targeting, you know, 50 miles, right? It's just going to be way too big. And you're just going to get too many clicks. And if you're a smaller populated city, then you might want to expand a little bit more because you might not get enough traffic if you're uh, if it's you know a small populated town or city or whatever it is okay so keep that in mind so from here just gonna go ahead and, and hit save there we go we have 15 miles around anaheim okay and then you can always go back and change it later you can always you know reduce the size you know always expand the size depending on how much traffic you're getting right there's all these adjustments and uh, that's part of the management right and optimizing to get your campaign to get to the most return on investment all right, now the, the thing that gets ignored a lot here and a lot of people make this mistake, so make sure you're paying attention here, is under location options, we want to target people in or regularly in your target location, okay? Now, Google has this on default and they recommend it. And again, Google is one of the most profitable businesses in the world and they're gonna want their advertisers to spend as much money as possible with them, right? But because you're watching this video and you drop a thumbs up and you're subscribed to this channel, you want to go ahead and select this option because now you're only going to be targeting people, um, you know, your most ideal customers, right? Your most ideal leads, people in our target location. What does that mean? That means that we're not going to get people from, let's say, from New York who is interested in, you know, in Anaheim our ads not going to show to people in New York. Okay. So that's what it's saying. So we're only, we only want to show our ads to people who are in Anaheim. All right. And then we're going to want to exclude people in regularly in, or who have shown interest in our excluded location. Right. So what does that mean? That means that let's say someone who is in Anaheim, but they're looking for somebody in New York. We don't want our ads showing for that. Right. We want somebody very targeted. We want our campaign to be super targeted so that we're not wasting any money. All right. So when it comes to advertising and your ad dollars, we want to put our money to use to work for us, right? We don't want to put our army out there, our soldiers out there to be wasting. Okay. So uh, make, just having these options alone, guys, is going to be, uh, it's going to save you guys a lot of money. All right. So more settings, ad rotations, we can leave it as is, optimize, prefer best performing ads. If you're a little bit more hands-on, you want to get more data when you start split testing your ad copies, uh, then you can just put do not optimize, rotate ads indefinitely. And what that's going to do is Google is going to rotate all your ads equally 
And then, so that way they get all get equal data. And then from there, you can go in, look at the data and see which ad is truly uh, performing better. And then you can kind of just pause and split test new ones, right? So that's gonna be a little bit more work, uh, but you can just leave it as optimized, pr prefer uh, best performing ads and that's gonna work just fine. All right, so you can start, you can have a start and end date, your ad schedule. Now, this is really, really important, guys, because I've talked to clients and they're like, yeah, you know, we, we, we can run ads 24-7, um, you know, they'll go to an answering machine, whatever, right? And that's not what we want. We want to run our, our, uh, our ads during the hours when there is someone available to pick up the phone and preferably someone who is trained to do sales, right, guys? Because people who are coming from internet, the internet, internet traffic is way different from a warm, pro a warm uh, customer or hot customer. Okay, so somebody that's you know that understands the back end of the system that can book these internet leads into their calendar or whatever, or a little bit of sales skills, some you know personable skills, whatever it is, we want that person available to pick up the phone. All right. So uh, from here, right. So typically business hours is going to work just fine. Right. So go ahead. 8 a.m. to, I don't know, do you want to, whatever ads you want to run into, right. This is on a 24 hour clock. Uh, but nonetheless, once you start the campaign, you can change it to 12 o'clock. So it might make more sense to you. I don't really go by the 24 hour clock. So more settings here. You can just leave the rest alone. We're just going to go hit next. Now, guys, this is where we get to start creating ad groups, okay? So some fun stuff for us. All right, so ad group number one, we get to go ahead and rename it, right? So this one, we're going to name it personal injury, injury lawyer, right? We're keeping everything um, in uniform, right? Because we want Google to think or to know that we are trying to, you know, be showing our ads to the searcher, ex exactly what they're searching for, all right? So really cool stuff here. I mean, we can enter products or services. They're gonna give us keyword samples. We can even put in a URL of a competitor or your own website, and then Google is gonna give us, you know, recommendations of keywords. So let's just put, type in personal injury. Let's see if we get any keywords out of this. There we go, guys. Look how easy that is, right? So we just got a bunch of uh, keywords. Now, obviously, there's probably going to be a lot of these keywords where you don't need, all right? So like, let's just go through here, like PIP claim, no win, no fees, solicitors, right? I mean, that's not a really good keyword. That's more of a, that's more of like a feature and, and something, a headline, but that's not a keyword we want to target. All right, criminal injuries, compensation. I mean, if that's something you want to target, personal injury attorney, me, right? So these are all really great, um, right? So I don't know, sue and emotional. So this is something like you don't want to do, pain and suffering damages, no win, no fee, solicitors, national. I don't know if you want to target the whole national, right? This typical car accident settlement amounts. This is more like info base, right? So like I said, we want to be as targeted as possible, okay? So Make sure you go through here and just, uh, we are targeting the exact one, exact words, okay? And inside my course, guys, if you guys don't know, I do have a course that goes way, way, way much more in depth with the whole Google ads. Like I got a whole module on Google ads alone that just, I, I give you the keywords, exact ad copy. I give you everything. I literally call my course a plug and play agency course because you can literally just copy and paste, uh, which makes things a lot easier. Uh, so if you're interested in that, I'll leave that. The link is in the description. You want to check that out. All right. Um, so, I mean, this is just going to, I'm just going to scratch the surface. So, because I don't want to make this video a whole three to five hour long video for you guys. Um, but there's going to be a lot of these keywords that you don't need. And at the end of the day, you want it to be uniform. Okay. So like, for example, you wouldn't want the word automat auto automobile accident lawsuit. Okay. Because this ad group, we want it to be all about personal injury lawyer, right? So we would want to create multiple ad groups and have very specific keywords um, that matches the ad group. So everything matches, okay? So uh, I'll just leave it at, as that, uh, but I'm not going to go too much more deep into that because let's get to the ad section. Ad section, pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and just uh, go ahead and put in the final URL. So the final URL is basically your website or your landing page. Now, 
key note here, guys, and a lot of people make this mistake or a lot of advertisers make this mistake. So pay attention here. Um, a lot of people who run ads, they'll send their traffic to their homepage or to their website. And that is not the way to do it, right, guys? So if you go to a store and you want to buy some basketball shoes, right, and you ask the, the worker there where are the basketball shoes, you want them to lead you to the basketball shoe section, right? So if you ask them and they point you to the aisle down that way and you got to walk through, you know, boots, you got to walk through checking out these heels, you're going to not want to be in that section. You're going to be like, oh, never mind. I don't want basketball shoes anymore. Okay. So you want, especially people with, uh, who are searching for things on the internet, they want instant gratification, right? That is the, that is the world of the internet. We are on the internet to get things instantly. Okay. We want to watch something. We search it up and we want to watch the exact video. Okay. So it's very important that when you are sending traffic to a page that you send it to the exact page containing the information that the searcher wants is looking for, all right? So if they are looking for a personal injury lawyer, you don't want to send them to your um, car accident page, okay? You don't want to send them to your, your articles where you, uh, you know, where you are so successful, okay? You want to send them to the personal injury, all right? And so from there, they're going to see exactly, the, they're getting what they're exactly looking for, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. All right, and then you can just kind of fill this out. So we'll just put, I don't know, PI lawyer, whatever. We'll just fill it out uh, as much as possible. Uh, there's a lot of people that try to run ads and they really don't even fill this out, okay? The whole purpose of filling this out, guys, is so that Google uh, just thinks that we're as relevant as possible. We're giving as much information as possible and that's going to increase our quality score. And why do I keep mentioning this quality score? Because the higher our quality score is, Right, Google takes a look at our campaign or how our ad account looks like. And depending on uh, how relevant we are to whatever we are advertising, we get a, a certain quality score. And the higher our quality score is, Google is going to reward us by giving us cheaper cost per clicks, right? So if we can lower our costs, that means our lead cost is going to drop as well. And so if we're getting that lower cost per lead, that means we're going to get more leads and we're going to see a higher return on investment, right? So I'm saving you guys a lot of money, but I'm also making you guys a lot of money by showing you guys this training here, all right? So please drop a thumbs up, take a second if you haven't already. All right, so PI lawyer, and then we'll put, I don't know, they do free consultation, right? So we'll type in free consults and you get 15 characters, all right? So headlines. So this is from here, you can start making headlines, um, you know, whatever fits the 30 characters. So maybe we'll put, I don't know, number one, personal injury lawyer, NY, right, from New York or something. If you're in LA, if you're in Los Angeles, right, whatever it is. Um, and then we can create multiple headlines, okay? So let's just say this is one of our headlines. Our next one is gonna be call for a free consultation. There we go. And maybe our third headline could be, um, hmm, what's another word good? Uh, no, no win, no fees or something like that. Okay. No fees unless you win. So you can create multiple headlines. And the thing about this now is that Google wants to be in more control of where they place your headlines. You can see they're changing it, right? We don't really want no like, this doesn't make sense, this ad right here. No win, no fees, call for free consultation, okay? So in order for it to make some sense here, we want to pin the headlines, okay? Uh, so obviously, we don't want personal injury lawyer to be like the third position because we want our ad to speak to our uh, searcher, okay? So, I mean, if they see like no win, no fees, call for free consultation, they're not gonna, it, it's not going to make any sense to them. And another thing to note, is that Google doesn't always show the third headline. Most of the time, like 90% of the time, I would say, uh, Google is only going to show the first and the second headline, okay? So it's very important that we want to pin uh, these ones, all right? So we, we can either pin as number one or number two, but probably ideally number one. 
And we definitely probably don't want it to show in any unpinned position because now we're allowing Google to be in control. All right, so Google has been trying to, I don't want to say manipulate, but Google is trying to be in more control of how advertisers are running their ads, right? So they want to be using you they want you to be using the automated bidding strategy they want to be in control of where your headlines show and yes it is helpful for the average person who just wants to run ads they don't want to worry about anything here's my money um get some type of traffic up there google handle the rest right and so really, I guess Google is trying to make it as easy as possible for you, but that's not going to get you the best results. So if you are watching this video, um, you're probably alone going to be like top 10% in Google ads. Okay. So, and that's not a joke either. Um, all right. So pinned as number one, call for free consultation, right? That's a pretty important call to action. So what I like to do is show that in position number two, and I kind of have a formula for how I want um, my headlines to show as well. And then that could be number two, no win, no fees, right? Um, let's talk about the template, or my little ad copy template, all right? So the first headline, I like to have it as what it, what the, um, the searcher is looking for, right? Because that's the first thing they see, headline number one. If they're looking for a personal injury lawyer, boom, right there, headline number one, that is exactly what they're looking for, okay? So if they're looking for the best PI lawyer, uh, Los Angeles, right? Best PI lawyer, Los Angeles, I'm gonna go ahead and pin that to number one, okay? So what happens here is that Google is going to like kind of just swap these out and rotate it, I guess, rotate the headlines. And then they're going to show the headline more often that gets the most results. All right. So that's what's going to happen. Headline number two is where I like most of the time I like to have a call to action. Um, or if we have a very strong offer, like a unique offer that is different from competitors or something like that, then that's where headline number two comes in, right? So call for pre-consultation is our, um, our call to action in this case. Uh, and then maybe, I don't know, award winning in LA or something like that, okay? I, I don't know, I don't know. But if it's something like crazy, something super unique, then we can have it as headline number two. Um, and then headline number three, which is the last one, which doesn't get shown often at all. Um, that's kind of like where I like to put either, you know, uh, something, a good feature about the business, um, you know, something that will add credibility, authority. I mean, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't get shown that much, but just to, for good practices, I don't know, 500, or maybe billions, billions of dollars recovered, right? So that's like a good one for um, personal injury lawyers, right? So, right. So if you have something unique, something that you are proud of, something that makes you different, unique from your competitors, I'm going to go ahead and pin that to number three. All right. So that's how it's going to work. And maybe you probably want maybe two of each headlines, right? So two ones, two, uh, two twos and two threes, and you can add more if you want to that way, uh, Google has some, uh, some headlines to play with and they, they can, know, they can show the best one that gets the best results. All right, guys. So that is the ad group, the campaign, the ad group and the ad copy training, right? So we're going to go ahead and click next. Now from here, um, extensions, this is where we go in really deep. I'm not going to dive in too deep into this, but I will say that you want to have site link extensions because it's going to make your ad pop out that much more. It's going to take up more real estate uh, on Google. So let's go ahead and search up personal injury lawyer. Okay. So these are going to be these are going to be site link extensions right here. As you can see, there's like extra links, right? So it kind of stands out a little bit more. Um, here's a location one, right? And as you can see, I typed in personal injury lawyer and most of them are going to say personal injury lawyer. So you, you uh, in a way, you kind of want to also uh, stand out, right? So maybe number one, best ranked, top rated, 
personal injury lawyer in your city, state, whatever it is, okay? Um, so just so you can just stand out in any way. All right, so the next thing, like I was saying, set link extensions are these little links right here. You can click on it, it'll take them to the appropriate page. Uh, so compared to these ones, they don't have it. Now, what it seems like is not that they forgot to put site link extensions probably, but most of the time Google will include this when you are number one, right? If you're at the very top, number one, locate number one spot on Google, then they'll give you these. This is a location extension. These are just more extensions that you can add on to it. All right, uh, as you can see here, site links here, site links are here, location, location, site links there. All right. So that's what that is, guys. So that those are site links extensions. We're not going to dive too too deep into that. Uh, call out extensions are just like features. So just um, and if you look at it, I mean, it's going to say add more business information to your ads because so it's kind of like just um, call outs, more features for your business, and it's not guaranteed that it'll be shown, but you want to fill out as much as possible, okay? So I'm gonna say site links extensions are really important, call out extensions are really important, call extensions are really important. All you would do is just put in your phone number and uh, what that's gonna happen, it's going to give you a phone number somewhere uh, on the ad, like right here or something. They can click on it and they can call you directly. All right, so that's a really good extension. And then you can click on more extensions to see there's any other ones. But these three are going to be the most, the best ones when you're starting out. And then as you start running ads more, you're going to get more um, extension options. Okay. So um, image, you're going to start seeing image extension. Uh, as you can see, there's no location in extension here yet. Um, and so you, you'll see more options. And when you run ads, um, you just want to add in as much as possible. All right. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. And then as you can see here, Google is going to automatically uh, suggest what type of budget you should have. And this, like I said, this is very helpful for someone that doesn't know how to run ads, right? Um, which is why you're probably trying to watch this video, figure it out yourself. Um, but in the long term, when people don't know how to run their ads, they're wasting money, okay? Like these things that we just went over, a lot of advertisers are skipping over it because they just want their ads running. And that's not the way to do it. And that's why there are marketing companies out there like myself. We are helping business owners. We work with lawyers all throughout the U.S. We work with local businesses all throughout the U.S. to get them a return on investment, to get them results, all right? And then from here, um, I mean, you can do the recommend it, rec recommend it. Uh, and then you can see, you know, what the costs are, average cost per click, whatever, right? Um and this is, oh, this is, this is the daily budget too. So this is how much you would be sp spending on the daily, right? So it's for personal injury. So it's actually pretty expensive, right? So, I mean, you probably don't need to be spending $500 per day uh, if you are a smaller like business type of niche or whatever, okay? Uh, but you can always set your custom budget, all right? So whatever your custom budget is, and let me show you how to figure this part out, all right? So... Um, let's just say your budget is a thousand dollars. Okay. And if you were to run ads all the whole entire month, you would just divide it by 30 days. Then your budget would be $33, right? Now, what I like to do is, um, I like to take it. I like to multiply it or I like to divide it by 28. If you're, um, uh, if you are going to be running ads every single day, just because I do you know, seven days a week times four weeks, 28 days. Uh, some days Google might spend less or more, uh, but I like to do it that way. It's entirely up to you. If you want to divide by 28 or 30, it doesn't really matter. But what I'm trying to get at is, let's say you only want to run ads three days a week, okay? So three days a week times four weeks in a month, that's 12, right? So 1,000 divide that by 12, your, now your daily budget is going to be $83 per day, okay? So that's how much you're going to be spending per day. And, you know, it's going to try to stay within a thousand bucks per month if you're running ads three days a week, right? So from there, just go ahead and you, and you can see Google will tell you right here too. For the month, you won't pay more than day, your daily budget times the average number of days in a month. Some days you might spend less, some days you might spend twice as much to make up for the days that you spent less, right? So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and click next, 
And obviously we're going to get some errors because we haven't set up tracking codes or anything like that. And obviously there's some other things here and we can go ahead and let me see, where's the publish button here? So view, no, 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 no. keywords at. So we can just go back here. Oh, that's right. So we don't have uh, a a legit URL on here. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna X that out for now, guys. So we're gonna go back to review, and we we can still publish the campaign. So this is just for purposes, for example purposes. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and publish it. All right, guys, so this is our campaign. Look at that. We are campaign live. And you can toggle here, pause, turn on. You can pause and turn on anytime you want, right? Um, and then once we click on here, this is our ad group level. And so we can see all the keywords we are targeting uh, within the ad group. And you can have multiple ad groups, right? You can have more than one campaign. You can see all the keywords we're targeting. Uh, if we go into here, right? We can start changing up devices, right? Do we want to only target mobile phones? Do we only want to target computer tablets? How do we feel about that? Right? So for my, my personal experience, mobile phones is your best converting one. So let's just say you only want to target mobile users, right? You can just go ahead and decrease it by hundred percent. And so we won't be targeting computers at all. We're only going to be targeting mobile phones and tablets. You can change your ad schedules in this uh, part right here. Just hit the pencil button. You can hit add more days and add the weekends. You can add individual days. You can change it to a 12 hour clock. There you have it. Locations, we can add more locations if we want to. It's the same thing as what we were doing earlier in the settings. Um, bup, 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 bup. What else are we missing here? Devices, add schedule, locations. Um, the next thing I want to show you is actually the settings. Okay, so the settings is where the engine is. Super important, okay? So we go into networks. We can, you know, check the search network and display network that we want. Maximized clicks here. So this is where we can change the bidding strategy. This is where, if we wanna go manual, this is where, where it'll happen. This is where the magic happens, okay? So uh, what we're going to do is click on that. Obviously look at that, Google is not going to show you, but we can select a bid strategy directly. And now you have more options, look at that. Right, so Google tries to hide these things from you. I don't know if it's for the better or the worse, but nonetheless, guys, uh, you know, ideally you want to go manual CPC. That way you're in control of how much you're spending on the keywords. And I'm going to show you how to do that research in a little bit here. Um, but if you want to be a little bit more hands off, let Google do its thing, then just start off with maximize clicks. It's fine or whatever we have right now, right? Maximize clicks already. Um, and then that, that, that way Google is going to try to get you the most clicks out of your budget. And then once we do keyword research, we want to have a bid limit, right? We don't want Google spending crazy amount on one click, right? So maximize clicks, change bid strategy. You can do all that. Uh, I will say the strategy, and I go more into it in depth inside my course, is that we don't want to stay with maximize clicks. We want to eventually end up at, let me see here. Uh, we want to change it to maximize conversion. So once we have enough data, consistent data, uh, we want to go to maximize conversion. And then once we get enough good, getting good results there, um, there's going to give an up, give us an option for target CPA, which stands for cost for action. And then we can start telling Google how much we want to spend on leads, right? So now that we have so much data, Google has the algorithm to go out and they know like what's more likely to convert. And they're going to try to stay within our cost per lead. So it's really powerful once you get good data going. Um, I go way more in depth inside the course. You guys want to check that out. It's in the description. All right. So from there, additional settings, add rotations, all that good stuff, right? Add, add copies, extensions. So you just play around, mess around with it and you should be good. All right. So the next thing I want to share with you is the keyword planner. Um, go into tools under planning. We're just going to go keyword planner. I'm just going to go ahead and open a new tab here. And what we want to do, the whole purpose here, this doesn't matter, is we want to know how much we should be bidding on uh, how much we should be paying for these personal injury keywords, right? So I'm going to go keyword ideas, US. And let's just say you are in Los Angeles, a very competitive city. 
for personal injury lawyers. If you drive down the freeway, there are billboards. Uh, there's like a billboard every like a quarter mile for personal injury lawyers. All right, so let's type in injury lawyer. Let's see what pops up here. Maybe personal injury, maybe accident lawyer, all right? So these are all keywords. And there we have it, guys. Look at this. So for the keyword injury lawyer, right? Um, bup, 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 bup. It's going to be anywhere between $48 to upwards to $405 for this specific keyword, right? It's a very wide cast of uh, range just because uh, it's just a very competitive. So it's kind of very skewed, all right? But for you, for your niche, it might be hopefully a little bit more tight, all right? For accident lawyers, right, guys, is super, super competitive in Los Angeles. As you can see here, the keyword is anywhere between $172 all the way upwards to $500 for one single click. That means if someone accidentally clicks on your ad, you could potentially pay $500 for that one accident click, all right? So we want to prevent all that by making sure that we have your whole campaign set up the right way. And that's why I taught you guys to teach you guys to target your most ideal uh, leads in the beginning. That way you're not just out here wasting money on clicks, okay? So it's very, very important. And then as you can see, if you scroll down, you can start seeing other keywords, okay? Now let's let's try, you know, let's try something more tight, not, not something not as competitive, all right? Let's start, let's do something, hmm. What is a good, uh, let's go with, a uh, dentist near me. I don't know. Is that a good one? Let's say you're running ads for a dentist. Dentist near me. Okay. So not as bad, right? Lots of searches, 18,000 searches, right? So there's definitely a demand for it in Los Angeles. So you're going to be paying anywhere between, you know, $8 to $32. All right. So you know that, you know, for your maximum, your maximum click, you probably don't want to spend, you know, give, give it a little bit wiggle room, whatever. You don't want to spend more than, I don't know, $32, $35. If you want to be a little bit more conservative, you don't want to spend, you know, over $25. Okay. So depending on how aggressive you want to be with your campaign as well. All right. So let's see, can we find something that is a lot like just very easy? I know. Um, car detailing, right? So car detailing guys, look at that. Super simple, right? So this is what I've been looking for. Car detailing. If you are a car detailing business, your hand car wash business, right? You're between a dollar and four dollars per click, right? A dollar and three dollars. Right. So there you go, guys. That is simple. That is how you do your if you were to go manual cost per click, you can start bidding on these specific keywords so that you tell Google what not to overspend. All right. So that's how you do that. You can start putting the numbers there. And that way, you know, you're not overspending. You know, you have the exact stats. So that's a good thing that Google is willing to give us this type of data. All right. So that's how you do that, guys. And um, so, I mean, that's pretty much a lot. We've covered a lot so far, guys. So if you guys appreciate this, please drop a comment. Um, you know, let me know that you guys appreciate this. Um, I will say let's do what there's one last thing that we got to go over and i'm just going to pause this out so that's what it's going to look like and when it's paused out it's grayed out one last thing guys so conversions all right so this is the last thing uh ending for the video this is probably the most well uh, they're all they've all been very important steps but this is also a very very important step right you want to set up your conversion tracking if you don't set up your conversion tracking, you're not going to get any data. Google's not going to know what it's doing. Google's not going to know what to optimize for because they don't know what's working, right? They don't know what is a lead or a conversion. They don't know what your goal, they, they don't know what is a goal for you, right? So there's two things that you want to set up conversion for. You want to set up one for website and you want to set up one for phone calls. I'm not going to go dive in way too deep, but for website, you can just go ahead and scan your website domain. So, uh, not going to do that, but essentially you're going to go ahead and just type in, you know, you're going to put the domain of your landing page and then it's going to give you instructions on where to copy and paste the codes uh, onto your landing page. So that way, when people land on your landing page and they fill out the contact form, they land on your thank you page, 
it's going to tell Google to count that person as a conversion. And so that way Google knows where, what keywords uh, generate that lead. They're going to know what ad generate that lead, what phone call, everything, right? So that's super important. All right, so that's how you do the website one. And then for the phone calls, which is the last one, you want to set one up for all three of them. I'm just going to go ahead and go through one of them for you guys. So we're going to do calls to a phone number on your website, okay? Website landing page. We're going to hit continue. We're going to go ahead and name it calls uh, from website, landing page, whatever you want to name it. We're not going to use a value unless the phone call is worth like something to you, but probably not. Just go ahead and don't use a value. We're going to count it as one. Okay. We don't want to count every phone call as a lead because one person might call in 10 times and we don't want to count that as 10 conversions, right? So phone numbers, super simple. Type in your, uh, you know, your, your business number. Ideally you have a call tracking number. So that way you can track these phone calls. Um, there's third-party software. You can look it up. I personally use callrail.com. Just get a call tracking number, have that on your landing page, your website, whatever, and type it in here. All right. Uh, call length. I like to keep it at one second because in case the call drops, doesn't go through or whatever, I still want to count that as a conversion. If you want to make sure, if you, if you are absolutely sure you pick up every single phone call and you want to, you only want to count calls as a conversion if, if if it was a good call then maybe do 10 seconds so there was some type of interaction um then count that as you know 10 seconds attribution model this is new data driven um i like to go last click i haven't really messed around with data driven too much i would think that this option would be better once you have the ads running you have solid amount of data and that's when you want to switch over to that um, so maybe starting out, maybe just go with last click. All right. So let's go ahead and just do an example number here. All right. Create and continue. Let's go ahead and put this up here. And you want to type it in the same exact way how it is displayed on your website or landing page as well. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click create and continue. And go ahead and install the tag yourself. So, I mean, this is going to be pretty similar to when you create your website one as well, but essentially you want to copy this code right here and paste it on the header of your website or landing page. Okay. So that means uh, this is the global site tag. This means that, you know, the, these conversions tracking codes that you're creating um, belongs to this. So this is kind of like the universal code that's going to cover your whole entire website. All right. So that's that. And you only need to paste this one time in your header. Now your phone snippet, um, you're probably going to want this on every single page as well, uh, because, you know, whatever page they land on, if they call this phone number, um, then we want to count that as a conversion. Okay. So what this code is saying is it's the phone tracking code, right? So um, if this code is on that page and they call this number, then it's going to fire this trigger and it's going to count it as a conversion towards Google ads or into your Google ad account. All right. So from there, just hit next, hit done, and it should pop up right there. All right, guys. So, I mean, that is A to Z. I just gave you guys a whole free course, free training on Google ads. Obviously I didn't go like super in depth because this video just really cool kept on going. But if you do want to, you know, become a Google master, whatever, or just have a better understanding of it and running it for yourself, or if you're a new marketing agency, or you want to offer Google ads, whatever it is, I have a course below, check it out. Um, but if you appreciate this free training in 2022, this is a solid, solid Google uh, ads tutorial, guys. So I would really appreciate you guys drop a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, guys, appreciate, uh, I mean, subscribe to the channel. It's your boy, Jordan. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.